Hello and welcome back to the Stronghold. I'm the Magi and it's that time again. No, it's it's not midweek. Uh, we're talking about a spoiler season and of course a new set release. Uh, this time around there is no alchemy set. Instead the March of the Machines Aftermath is replacing the alchemy release slot. Uh, these cards, however, are going to be 100% standard legal, and it's going to be a 50-card set. Now, uh, through the official release and uh, spoilers, we have come to know that this is going to be a 15 uncommon, 25 rare, and 10 mythic set. And Wizards has told us that uh, store packs are going to be brought in and a limited time drafting option. And uh, although we don't know much about that at the moment, I uh, definitely have some theories on it. And we might find out more with uh, the usual Monday announcement period. Uh, but until then, there's a lot of good information here, so be sure to stay tuned. But before we get into all that, all these videos for the new sets, they take up an awful lot of time and have a very limited lifespan to be viewed. So do me a favor and hit that like button. It's what mom would want you to do. Now, um, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, right. All right, so given that there is 15 uncommons in this very small set, uh, we can project that that means we need about 37 or so packs to purchase in order to get that uh, more than likely play set of the uncommon cards. And that is a big chunk of our potential budget. A typical season, I recommend purchasing about 45 packs or budgeting 45,000 gold for packs. Uh, this time around, since we have the two standard legal sets, be on the lookout for some sort of alchemy style bundle where you're able to buy packs at about a 25% discount. I really think they're just going to take the alchemy bundle and reface it as aftermath. And uh, if you invest 15,000 gold there and you get 20 packs, that still leaves you room for about 30 packs of mom, uh, plus any other variants that you might want to put in there. And that is a net gain of five standard packs for the exact same budgeted gold. That's pretty good. We have also been told to expect some sort of short time uh, limited environment. And my guess again is they are going to just steal what they normally do for the alchemy sets and give us a premier draft environment that replaces one of the commons with a card from Aftermath. Um, unless you are just tremendously into these very corner case, weird, unique premier draft environments, this is something I would avoid because one, premier is twice the investment as a quick draft. And uh, for another thing, one card from Aftermath is really not a lot of opportunity. And lastly, for this particular environment, we already have a lot of pack variants. Um, as always, you have your rare mythic slot. Uh, this time around, we're giving up a common for a guaranteed battle slot. We're potentially giving up another common for the legendary creatures uh, bonus sheet. And now we'd be talking about giving up yet another slot for an aftermath card. So this is already a super chaotic limited environment. And in my opinion, this only makes it worse and harder to farm in any meaningful way. So think long and hard before doing any of the Alchemy Limited. Uh, of course, we probably won't know until tomorrow when they hopefully give us more information in the announcement, but this is my expectation and my recommendation based on those expectations. Uh, I'll probably put out some sort of community update once we know more. And the formerly Planeswalkers characters have proven to be exactly what we've suspected now for a long while and, uh, well, really was confirmed with the spoilers. Um, a lot of the existing Planeswalkers are now shifting to being legendary creatures. 
And there's a lot of people out there saying this is the end of Planeswalkers. They're not going to be around anymore. And I just don't think that's the case. Uh, I do think we are going to continue to see these characters uh, continuing on as legendary creatures. Uh, the new uh, breakaway paths in the multiverse are going to allow them to travel from plane to plane, even without their spark. And rather than completely eliminating Planeswalkers as a card type, I think they are just going to kind of Lorwinize it again. Uh, I think we're going to get back to the point where Planeswalkers are unique, special cards. And I'd say within the next two if not four standard sets we're probably going to be able to identify uh, five principal planeswalkers one of each color uh, obviously nisa is out but there's many more that are still out there uh, chandra we still know uh, vivian is still known to be out there elspeth is probably the strongest category and is somewhat of a known planeswalker at this point for white um, and uh, although we don't really have a strong indication, Liliana seems like the strongest candidate for the Black Planeswalker. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if that's the only Planeswalkers we see over the course of the next year. Uh, which means that any sort of budget-friendly standard uh, Super Friends deck is probably dead on arrival here. Uh, and instead, we're going to see a lot more onus and emphasis on legendary creatures, which slots in nicely to uh, Commander and that uh, breadbasket for Wizards of the Coast. And hey, speaking of the Commander format and uh, Commander Masters, there's been some speculation that they may be releasing Commander for Arena at some point. And while that still might be true, Wizards of the Coast has officially stated that the set Commander Masters will not be coming to Arena. So either they don't have the programming right yet, or this is just slated for further down the road with regards to Arena, uh, if ever at all, because of course this is just pure speculation. All right, so now let's go over some of the individual singles. And for the most part, I'm going to be sticking with the uncommons here because, of course, as budget players, those are the cards that we know we're going to have and thus should be thinking about. Uh, first up, Copcoat Vanguard. A human soldier is just so relevant on so many different tribal aspects. Uh, a two-mana 2-2 two -two is pretty good, and the fact that it has a Lord effect each other human you control gets plus one, plus zero, and has war to one. Uh, I hate to say this is going to be a staple, but uh, at least for budget standard, this is going to be a staple. Uh, whether it continues to carry itself in the eternal formats, we'll have to see. But if nothing else, it's a much cheaper card than a lot of the rares that you see in both humans and soldier builds. <clears throat> Deification, uh, two mana enchantment. Uh, when it ETBs, it choose a planeswalker type. And if you don't remember, generally planeswalker types aren't restricted to the first name of the planeswalker, be it Jace, Chandra, etc. Uh, planeswalkers you control of the chosen type have hexproof. As long as you control a creature, if damage dealt to a planeswalker you control of the chosen type, would result in all loyalty counters of it being removed. Instead, all but one of those counters are removed. So, I mean, we might see something like with a Planeswalker tribal deck going on where you try and play all the various versions of a specific Planeswalker. Yeah, it, it could happen. Uh, Harness Snubborn, a four mana two five with Vigilance is not great stats. Uh, but when it deals combat damage to a player, return a target artifact or enchantment card from the graveyard to your battlefield. Um, this obviously looks like it wants to have a home in the Enchantress deck, but of course that is getting ready to rotate here in just a matter of months. And even that deck has other things it would really rather be doing with its 4-drop slot. Uh, skipping ahead to Spark Rapture, uh, three mana, another enchantment. 
Uh, when it ETBs, draw a card. Each Planeswalker with one or more loyalty counters on it loses all abilities and is a creature with power and toughness equal to the number of loyalty counters on it. Uh, so I think this is more of a story piece than anything else. Uh, I think this is kind of uh, a signpost for what's going on with Planeswalkers and the, the new becoming of them. Uh, how much actual play this is going to see, I'm not sure, but it has a unique, interesting ability here, and uh, someone is very likely to break that. Uh, filter out, I think, is one of the more exciting uncommons for one and two blue, so a little hard to splash. Return all non-creature, non-land permanents to their owner's hand. So that, of course, is going to include Planeswalkers um, and the newly christened battles, as well as enchantments, uh, non-creature artifacts, etc., etc., etc. So that one spell can do a lot of work, particularly against a control deck. Um, interesting aspects there. Uh, Talarian Contempt, 3 and 2 blue. Again, not particularly splashable and a very high mana count here, particularly for budget decks. When it ETBs, put a rejection counter on each creature your opponent controls. At the beginning of your end step, uh, for each opponent, choose up to one target creature they control with a rejection counter on it. That creature returns to the top or bottom of its library. Um, so kind of a slow mass bounce effect, but between the casting cost and the one trigger per turn at the end of your turn, uh, my thought is it might be a little too slow. Uh, in black, we got Blot out. Uh, target opponent exiles a creature or planeswalker they control with the greatest mana value among creatures and planeswalkers they control. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it's basically just a, uh, a sacrifice removal thing. Uh, Death Rattle Oni, six and a black for a 5-4 Demon Spirit with Flash. This spell costs two less to cast for each creature that died this turn. So, I mean, you, you could have some setup there for an early thing going on. Uh, when Death Rattle Oni enters the battlefield, destroy all other creatures that were dealt damage this turn. Um, so this is almost like anti-wrath, in my opinion. If your opponent wraths your board, kills off a bunch of stuff, um, then you can flash this out and start your turn with a 5-4. Seems relatively good, uh, if situational. Markov Baron, 3 mana, 2-2 two, two with Convoke. Uh, it also has Life Link. It's a Vampire Noble. Uh, other Vampires you control get plus 1, plus 1, and it has a Madness cost. Uh, I'm really looking at this card in several different aspects. I'm not sure what it'll do for us in Standard, but I think uh, Vampire Madness is going to be a deck in Historic, and this is going to help that deck along a great deal. Uh, moving into Red, we've got the Warmonger, a 3-mana three 3-2 three, with Haste, Ogre Warrior. So not the best uh, creature types, but pretty decent stat lines. Um, whenever it attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a dragon card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So this tells me there's dragons coming. Um, I'm almost certain there's going to be at least one dragon card in Lord of the Rings, but I would say next year in particular, uh, we might be looking at some, uh, some sort of dragon tribal thing. Uh, it would be interesting if the third and fourth set for next standard year had uh, Tarkir in the title somewhere. Uh, but anyway, we'll see. Reckless Handling, a two-mana sorcery at Uncommon. Search your library for an artifact card, reveal it, put it into your hand. Shuffle and discard a card at random. If an artifact card was discarded this way, it deals two damage to each opponent. I think this might be the type of card that Mono Red Artifacts needs in order to be able to stick around in Eternal formats. Uh, otherwise, I think that particular red of uh, or that particular build of Mono Red might be a little too weak to really carry forward. Uh, Animus Might, three mana sorcery, just lots of sorcery speed in this set. 
Uh, costs two less if it targets a legendary creature you control. Target creature you control deals damage equal to twice its power to target creature. So this basically just wants to go in the Legends Matter deck which is not super budget friendly to begin with, but uh, this uh, this could give it a little more oomph in the budget versions. Might be worth playing around. Uh, Under City Upheaval, another sorcery, one and two green. Uh, Undergrowth, there's something we haven't seen in a while. Distribute X plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures you control, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard as you cast this spell. Creatures you control gain Vigilance until end of turn. Uh, we have talked this season about the plus one plus one counters deck and how good that's going to be next year. This may play a part of that if it doesn't hate that double green casting cost. This might be like a two of late game finisher sort of thing. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, Campus Revolution and Cosmic Rebirth both uh, give us some graveyard recursion shenanigans both return their uh, respective things to the battlefield uh, but unfortunately they're not black cards which is where graveyard shenanigans usually happen uh, beast of the victorious dead an enchantment uh, orzov colors at the beginning of your instep if one or more creatures died this turn you gain that much life and distribute that many plus one plus one counters among creatures you control. Um, not really what we're looking at on the plus one plus one deck, but it could create a home for itself at some point. Uh, Gold Forged Thoptrix, uh, that is Azorius Colors. Uh, artifact creature, Dinosaur Thopter. Where have you been all my life? A 1-3 flying lifelink. Each legendary permit you control has Ward 2. Uh, again, this, this could play in a lot of places, uh, uh, blue-white skies, uh, any sort of white life game, Legends Matters, uh, just a really universally strong card. I know I'm going to be looking forward to having four of those brewing into the Eternal formats in particular next year. Uh, from there, is that, it, I think that is everything, if memory serves. Yep, that is, that is all the other cards. Uh, Drenith Ruins is another one of these that has, uh, some potential in the plus one, plus one counters deck. Uh, a lot of mythic used to be planeswalkers, now legendary creatures. Uh, Karn, Tyvar, Sarkin, Subat, Rocco, well, Rocco, not so much. Uh, Omnixilis, Niv-Mizzet, uh, let's see here, who else? Uh, Narset, there's one, Nahiri, Kiori, and I think there's some others in the monos. Oh, Calyx, uh, that's one I totally forgot he was a planeswalker. Uh, Nisa, and I think, I think that might be all of them. Yep, that is all the planeswalkers that are now legendary creatures so this set has a lot to be so small uh definitely some some various things particularly at the un uncommon level that i will be keeping an eye out and we will no doubt be brewing with at some point in the future so uh definitely have a plan for adding this to your collection i wouldn't necessarily be worried about opening packs now um they can certainly wait around until fall. We don't know if these cards are fair game for the new player experience decks, but we have no reason to think that they aren't. And folks, before you go, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on a thing. Because I know I can't change the magic economy all by myself, but I think we can.